Hello and thank you for coming. Here we have a little kitty cat. I don't know if it's old. I think it's it's certainly not a kitten. But uh, I found this cat. I think it was in Elmvale, and we had stopped at a bakery. And I'm pretty sure this is sort of the bakery cat who hangs around. I don't know if it lives inside, I don't know if it lives on the street, I don't know if it comes and goes, I don't know. But it was fall, and it, this was outside the bakery, and it was just lying up against the wall, like it didn't have a care in the world, taking in the sun, and I liked the fact that there were some uh, leaves around in the foreground, and I guess that stuff on the wall is growing there, or... It might be a planter. I don't remember. It's been a while. And then, of course, as if to say, I've had enough of you, the cat stuck out its tongue. It was probably just licking. But anyway, I what I liked about this cat, it has, uh, well, it has character. It has many colors. Certainly, I would guess it's, you know, not a purebred anything. Um... I don't know, it just caught my eye, and while everybody else went in the bakery, I took out the camera. And as you probably can see, I did. I mean, I did get down on my knees, and this was shot very low. I might have even had the camera sitting right on the ground. And that is... Well, that can make the difference between a picture and a great picture. Just a little difference in elevation. It's all about the angle. And uh, it's funny I've told this story before, not about this cat, but I remember once um, there was a person who was retiring in my workplace, and they were notoriously anti-photography. They did not want their picture taken. And the yearbook had taken many, um, many tries, or sorry, they had sent many people in an effort to try and get this person to cooperate and get a picture of them. And... Um, all had been sent away, which they figured would happen. But they really wanted to have a shot to remember this person by. So they sent me. And I knew them pretty well, but I knew. And the first thing I said is, is, look, I know you don't want me to do this. And that's fine. I don't have to do it. But they, you know, they just want you to be remembered in your, in your setting here as... You know, she was rather a legend. And she had a desk with some interesting things on it. So she, when she agreed and she sat behind her desk, I quickly went in front of the desk. And she, before she could change her mind, I shot a couple of shots that would have been fine. But just like this picture with the cat, it was the difference in elevation that I needed. So I, I made sure I had something that would be okay. But then I said, can you just give me a moment more? And she said, okay. So I remember I went and I set the camera down, not on her desk and not on the desk right in front of her, but two desks back, and had it literally just sitting on the desk. And then I moved it around, as I say, to find the frame. Now she had some flowers on her desk and, you know, a pencil holder and all kinds of other accessories. And I found just the perfect spot that I could put the focus on her coming gently up from the desk to her at her desk, showing her accessories in the foreground. And it went, and it, it took an okay picture and turned it into an epic portrait. All because I didn't just hold the camera up to my eye and shoot. I put it on the desk and then went to hunting. And the difference in elevation between the desk and my eye was, I don't know, a couple of feet or so. I don't, I, I never measured. But just remember, life is not seen from the height of your eye. And this cat, if I had just kind of stood there and pointed down, be it with my camera or my phone or whatever, it would not have been nearly as good. I needed to get down 
to the street level, to the sidewalk level, where the cat was. And at just the right angle to get the cat, and the wall, and the leaves, and such. I, I think I was still holding this just slightly above the ground, but I'm really, as I say, it's been a while, I'm not sure. So I present to you this scraggly cat sticking out its tongue, probably tired of me, by, by the, yeah, mind you, it was a very nice cat, I petted it before, it, I didn't just find it lying there, it was kind of strolling around and we talked a bit, much, much as what I said in previous episodes about making your subject comfortable. And really, I didn't know I was going to shoot this picture, um, but you know, when the cat plunked itself down by the wall, and made itself at home and comfy, like, ah, oh, the sun is here and life is good. Then, um, I wasn't going to move the cat or try and move the cat. I didn't know the cat. I didn't certainly didn't want to get bitten or scratched. I don't know if it had claws or not. But to me, it looked like there was a possible great picture there. And I worked, not the room, but the street, to get it. And then it stuck out its tongue, and that just made it even better. Uh, I think I did enter this picture into some competition or online things, and I think it did well. I think. So, whether it be a phone, a DSLR, or one of those mirrorless cameras, or an Android, or an iPhone, or whatever, just, you know, it's okay to take a few minutes and find something, that, some moment that would otherwise be lost and never captured. And this cat, um, well, I haven't been back there. I think this picture was taken maybe seven or eight years ago. So is this cat still hanging around the bakery? I don't know. Is there another cat there? I don't know. But this cat will now live on forever in this image. And I don't know the name. I don't need to know the name. I just know that we had a moment together that will now last forever. So, carry your camera, carry your phone, whatever it is you shoot with. It doesn't have to be the best. What really makes a difference is your ability to see the possibilities and to perhaps get down on the ground, in this case, that would be the answer, or I found it to be the answer. But, it, you know, it's not always, it, it's higher, it's lower, it's to the side. Just find what you think is the perfect angle and shoot. And don't be afraid to experiment. If you, you know, you shoot and you say, well, I don't know, move a little higher, move to the left, move to the right. Just trust your eye, follow your eye. And, perhaps at some point, many eyes will see your image and say, Wow, that's cool. At some point, uh, I will find, there was a picture I took of a dog. And it was at the Kinmount Fair. And this was kind of a, a boxer type dog. But it was a hot day. And this dog had the biggest tongue you can imagine. Speaking of tongues. Not speaking in tongues, but speaking of tongues. And um, they were there, you know, the people were there, and I said, whoa, 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 hold on a second. And I had my camera, of course, and I took it out, and I shot a picture, and I told them, I'm going to enter that picture into the competition, the, uh, the photography competition at the Kinmount Fair the next year. I will. And I did. And it won. But here's the funny thing. When I went to go and pick up the pictures after, and, you know, the ribbon was there, but the picture was gone. I was like, whoa, 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 what happened? In the time between when I shot the picture and when I'd entered the picture, which was a year later in the competition, sadly, the dog had died. And the people really, really liked the picture, wanted the picture, and uh, even though it really wasn't kosher, um, they were there right near the end, and they begged the person, whoever it was that was in there mining things, to let them take it. 
And, quite remarkably, they did let them take it. Now, I didn't care. I mean, the print was not all that big. It might have cost me 10, 12, maybe 20 cents or whatever. And I never have seen the people again, but I was very happy that they had the picture, and it's probably framed on their mantle somewhere. Um, and they, basically, they let me borrow their dog for a moment, although I didn't have to take it anywhere. I just stopped them, and the dog was just like, oh. But they gave me a fraction of a second, and I gave them a memory for life. So, we are the keepers of the memories, we photographers. So go forth and find those magical moments that will live because of you forever. So I will leave you in silence that you can look. Um, and if you want to look longer, of course, just pause this. But I will leave you to behold the magic of this kitty cat.